Welcome to the Fall Play YouTube channel. Hey, everyone. Um, welcome. Welcome from wherever you're listening to from around the world. Uh, and welcome to Coffee with Foul Play. And today we're continuing with our series, Let's Follow the Evidence. And we're looking at part six. Now, the purpose of doing the podcast, if you can recall, is that we're chronologically going through MAM 1. And we're looking at the case, how it unfolded. And of course, we're looking at both um, Brendan and Stephen's cases. And as you'll see that they, uh, a lot of the times they intertwine. So welcome everyone. Our regular researchers for today are BB, Big Jeff, Christy, Milbilly, and Zoe. And on chat today, we have both Lily and Sammy, who will be uh, looking out for your questions. And please, we invite questions all the time. So if you've got to ask something, please do. We'll try and answer it during the podcast. And we appreciate all your input. Our guest researchers for today are Day Walker and Obi-Wan. And my name is Dr. Silkman. And before we start, all of us from Foul Play would like to thank all of our subscribers and our listeners to our channel. So far, we have 468 subscribers and our videos have had over 49,000 views. So we'd like to thank everyone for your excellent participation and your comments. It's really fantastic uh, to get your input and we hope that you are learning something all the time. Now, as you know, um, <laughs> a week in this game, uh, a lot of things happen. Uh, one of the most significant events so far is the release of all these new photographs. Um, I, think, I think there are over 600 new ones, uh, and they're really, really fascinating. And of course, um, some of the video, some of the uh, pictures that have been released uh, show different pictures of the RAV4, which is truly remarkable. So guys, before we start the pro podcast proper, um, Obi-Wan, do you want to make any comments about the photographs that you've seen of the RAV4? Obi-Wan. Sure. Yeah, I looked at uh, a couple photos that were uh, taken of the front RAV, and uh, I'm trying to compare uh, the RAV4 that was on uh, Avery's property. Yes. Uh, which the um, law enforcement has in their possession opposed to Teresa's vehicle where she's sitting or standing in front of it. And I yes. paid attention real close to the front part of the vehicle uh, on a driver's side uh, left fender. And yes. I kind of noticed some damage that was up there. And when I blew the photos up, uh, Millbilly and I, uh, and Daywalker, or not Daywalker, but it was, uh, uh, sorry, Jamie. Um, yes. Number plate. He pointed out this dent. He located a dent that we didn't know exist before. Well, it kind of got me thinking, and I'm wondering if that dent actually existed on both vehicles. So I blow, blew up both images, and sure enough, I seen the damage on both vehicles, in my opinion. I pointed wow. it out with color codes so you could tell which dent was where uh, in my opinion it just it just seems like it is the actual RAV4 the, both right. the one in possession and Teresa's is indeed the same RAV4 wow that's a remarkable observation Obi-Wan um, Milbilly Milbilly oh, sorry. one thing um, real quick one yes, thing real Bibi. quick uh, Sammy should be sharing a link to where uh, the pictures that Obi is talking to 
in the chat. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Bibi. Um, Milbili, do you have any comments about the RAV4 pictures, the new ones? Uh, the one that are in that 466 photos? <laughs> yes. Uh, it's got more questions than I had before now. <laughs> yes. Uh, has it changed your opinion on anything, Milbili? No. I'm uh, still thinking the same way I was as always. There's two cars. Yes. Okay. I, I'm trying to debunk it, but. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right, Jeff, if, I, if I could. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I would I would invite everyone to uh, take a look at <clears throat> Mill Billy's channels. There's going to be, uh, there was a live last night. There, there's probably going to be another live tonight to talk about the. Uh, to talk about the round. I think it's a very interesting topic, and I like to thank the people who took the made the effort to get the pictures foiled, um, yes. because that allows us that that allows people to take a good, long, hard look at them, and and that's what people are doing. And hopefully, that's the most rewarding thing that the uh, people actually ask for the FOIA could could ask for. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Big Jeff. Uh, Obi Wan, do you have any additional comments? Yeah, I think it's really important that like we as researchers try to debunk what we find or discover. That way, yes. if we can't debunk it, it just further corroborates the finding, you know. Yes. And, uh, yes. Yeah, so I just yes. I dare anybody to debunk it. Yes. Thank you very much, Obi-Wan. Yeah, look, you're right. I mean, the whole idea is we can all look at these pictures and, you know, we thank the research community for obtaining them. They're very, very valuable. And uh, by looking at the pictures, we can compare them because if we have a look at slide 146, uh, this is really where we left off last time. Um, we know that the RAV4 was discovered on November the 5th, 2005 by um, Pam and Nicole Sturm. Now, Pam, we affectionately refer to as Pam of God. Uh, she was given a camera, and we're not sure whether she used the camera to take these pictures or whether her daughter Nicole used her mobile phone to take the pictures of the RAV4. And what we find here, they took in total six pictures. And it became pretty clear that the Toyota RAV4 that uh, Pam and Nicole found on the salvage yard is blue in color. Now, we've discussed this many, many times. And the good thing now is that we can compare the RAV4 that was found on the salvage yard compared to the RAV4 in which Teresa is standing in front of and also the RAV4 that's in the crime lab. We can directly compare them. Mill Billy, do you have any comments about what you found with the color of the RAVs? Any comments? Uh, Mill Billy? Big Jeff. Uh, yeah, I can't hear Mill Billy, although he appears to be unmuted. Uh, oh, okay. Mill, is, is he ready? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Well, uh, some it, the photos, the car looks green in some photos, and it looks completely blue in other photos. Yes. Yes. And correct. The fact that we only have one evidence tag with that VIN number on it, and when that VIN number is on it, it says blue. Yes. Yes. Uh, do Jeff. okay. Do yeah. one thing. We need the title for her car. Right. Right. And now there is uh, uh, Christy. Do you have a comment? I'm going to assume we'll never have access to the title. It doesn't exist that I know of. There was a lien holder on the vehicle, correct? Well, if there was, that means the bank would have it. Correct. That's what I'm saying. It was never released. It's nowhere for us to have it. Yes. And if the bank has it, you probably wouldn't get, be able to get it without a court order. Right. But um, technically, 
do you guys believe that the RAV4 is still in lockup or do you believe that the RAV4 is gone? Crushed? It's gone. It's gone. Big Jeff? I, I, I certainly believe that, uh, that I, I still believe that there were two. Um, and two uh, there was yep. two, two RAVs and like Mill Billy said, I, I think there was a, a green one and a blue one. I think they, for, 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 for some reason, Teresa's green RAV4 <clears throat> was not suitable to be planted perhaps because uh, she had a car accident and that's really how she died. Perhaps some other reason that I don't know what it is. Yes. Um, but but uh, it would be very easy for them to manipulate um, what they took pictures of and be very careful that they didn't, you know, uh, show a picture, certainly both of them at the same time or one, not the other. And it would be very easy for them with access to a salvage yard to take the one they didn't like, which was the green one, and crush yes. it, and it's gone forever. So for sure, one of them is gone forever because they're not going to keep two hanging around. No, no. <laughs> um, uh, but the, the other one, I, I I just tend to doubt it. The way that uh, they got rid of the bones, uh, they, they need to get rid of the rav. Uh, they probably kept the panels. Um, yes. I, I would hope that they would, it would be considered another violation of Stephen, Stephen's rights if they got rid of the rear panel that contained sample A23. Um, yes, but, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, that, that law seems to be up in the air right now. That's correct. There was, um, there was some discussion uh, during the trial about uh, keeping um, certain pieces of evidence. And I believe it wasn't actually defined about keeping the entire RAV4. My understanding was that um, an agreement was made about keeping certain parts of the RAV4, potentially the panels. Uh, Milbilly, do you have a comment? Well, why do we have in some photos where they just take little cuts out of the seats mm -hmm. and then they decide to go back and remove all of the seat? Yep, yep. The, uh, what why you not, find... Is, why, yeah. why not just unbolt the seats from the car and remove the seats from the car? Yep. That'd be yep. a lot easier than cutting the whole damn fabric off the seats. Yeah. Well, apparently what uh, Sheree Cohane did, uh, now remember, Sheree Cohane was the DNA analyst from the uh, crime lab. The little slots that you see in the seats apparently are where droplets of blood were found. So what she did is that she actually cut out those uh, blood droplets from the seats. But, Milbilly, you are correct. The FBI believe it or not, came in and took literally took out all the seats from the RAV and they used a special laser to scan various objects uh, from the RAV4. And this is rather bizarre because when you think about it, in the RAV4, they found blood and saliva allegedly belonging to Teresa Horbach and they found six droplets of blood allegedly that belonged to Stephen Avery. So why would the FBI be scanning um, the seats? Um, Milbilly, do you have uh, any answers to that? Why would they be doing that? Well, just like if, if you read Queso, they state that the FBI received the seats in boxes. Yes. It says that they removed the seats from the boxes. But why do we still see the seats in the car? Yes. And in actual fact, uh, Milbilly, we, we can see photographs of the FBI using their laser scanning the seats. Now, uh, as, you, as you said, as you alluded to, Milbilly, in Queso, they said the reason for scanning is that they uh, scan for fingerprints. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but did they actually find Stephen Avery's or Brendan Dassey's fingerprints within the RAV? None. They did not, yep. Yep. So why would the FBI be scanning uh, objects within the RAV4? What, what were they actually looking for? It seems a rather bizarre um, that they would go to that level of detail. Obi-Wan, do you have any comments? Well, I noticed a photo of a, uh, the driver's seat, and the driver's seat actually had a blood. It, it appeared to be a blood stain. I'm not yes. going to say that it was a blood stain, but that's what it looked like to me. 
Uh, maybe they were, I don't know what those uh, scans and how they operate. I don't know. Uh, maybe they give off some type of lighting or something like that to where they could see um, fluids or blood, like it would discolor yeah. it in a way to where they could know what it was, you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But I'm pretty sure you can't get fingerprints off of fabric. No, no. Yeah. It's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, uh, it must've been very frustrating guys for the investigators because they're alleging that Stephen Avery deposited six droplets of blood within the RAV, but there was no blood found outside the RAV that belonged to either Stephen or Brendan. Furthermore, they didn't find any fingerprints within the RAV that belonged to either Stephen or Brendan. So you have this crazy situation whereby you have six discrete blood drops or flakes. Remember, blood flakes were found within the RAV4 and nothing yeah. else. Uh, BB, do you have any comments about that? No, just that I want to know how he blood flakes. <laughs> That's a very good point. Emil, Billy, do you have a comment? Thank well, you, BB. I, I was noticing in the photos of the drip of blood on the passenger rear door. Frank, yes. Yes. In one photo, you can see it's complete. And in other photos, it looks like they something like part of the blood's been chipped off. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I do have Baby. an answer, uh, most Baby. likely, because uh, the car or the window would be like a very glassy-like substance. Um, and when I did that experiment where I rehydrated my blood, basically, um, when yes. I dripped it onto a porcelain plate, as it dried, it took very little vibration, and it cracked into shards and like unstuck from the plate and yeah yes. this was reconstituted blood it wasn't even recon it was just where i had dripped the initial blood and it was right. still drying and as yeah. it dried i did get one that looked like the floor in the bathroom with the donut hole in the middle of the blood drop one yeah. that was a full dome drop of blood dried where there was no blood in the center of it and yeah. they just they started breaking apart uh the cat stepped beside the the saucer onto my yeah. computer and they broke apart just from that little of a vibration so yeah. any vibration that dried blood starts cracking and popping and yeah uh, yeah yeah flaking off uh, and yeah yes thank thank you booby bb uh obi one yeah, I also did a test with my own blood for like seven days. And for I seven blood. days? Seven days, yep. yes. And I dripped blood on a tile uh, because I, I wanted to give it the amount, of, at least the amount of time that Teresa would have had, which would have been, you know what I mean, uh, the 31st till mm -hmm. at least the 5th when the vehicle was found. But yeah. The state was contending that it came from when Stephen had cut his finger, but that incident actually happened a couple of weeks prior to yes. this meeting with Teresa. So yes. Stephen would have had a couple of weeks, had his, you know what I mean? It just doesn't work out to me. But yes. I noticed that I was able to rehydrate this blood also. Yes. And back then it was just a theory. Nobody knew that you could actually accomplish this, but it, it's actually true. You can. And yes. the blood that was on the, um, the, uh, door, uh, jam right there in the, the vehicle, yes. those yep. flakes, it appears that that may be where the dry flakes came from. Like if they uh, chipped those dry flakes off, it, they could have used them to sprint. Cause uh, Stephen's blood was on top of Teresa's already dried blood without it even being mixed together. If he yeah. was an active bleeder and there was blood in that vehicle, you would have seen a mixture of blood, and they can tell if there is a mixture of blood. Correct. Correct. Yeah, and good point, Obi-Wan. Very good it point. For sitting on, on the top there, it's just yes. uh, very questionable. Yeah. 
it, yeah, it is very, very unusual. Milbilly, do you have a comment? Well, Stephen Avery, yes, he did initially cut himself weeks earlier, but he was constantly reopening his cut. Yes. And he reopened his cut the same night that Colburn talks to him. That's correct. And, and uh, when, yes. He, he bled all over his car, all, yes, over, his, all over his truck. Yes. All, all over the snowmobile. And also inside his house. <clears throat> yes. Yes. And, and it's remarkable. Thank you, Mill Billy. It's remarkable because there are pictures that show uh, the droplets of his blood in his truck. And you can see that there's no flaking, the blood absorbed in the carpet. Now, I realize that every carpet in every car is going to be slightly different. But it, someone, it, it does raise a very good point as to why the blood would flake and not absorb into the carpet. And uh, Obi-Wan mentioned the fact that if you look at the uh, blood that's present in the, I think it's the rear passenger door side on the metal frame, it's highly flaked. It's highly flaked. And it really, and dried out too. So it depends on when that photograph was actually taken. Daywalker, welcome. Yes, so it, it is very interesting. Uh, the other thing, of course, don't forget, guys, is that um, when the examiners looked at the RAV4 and they found the droplets of blood, what, they, what the analyst normally does is takes a swab first. So they... Uh, a test for phenolphthalein. It's a phenolphthalein test. The purpose of that is to test that the uh, stain is indeed blood because it turns a pink color. So they apply um, a sterile swab to the blood droplet. So in effect, you're adding a solution to the blood droplet. You're diluting it. If the swab turns pink, it indicates the presence of blood. What the analyst does, for example, Cherie Gohane, she'll take a fresh swab and go back to the stain and take another sample or DNA analysis. So in effect, what we're looking at is a blood stain that's been swabbed twice, right? Because if you look at the ignition, we've all seen the pictures where the, uh, there's a streak that will that could well be due to swabs, guys. Does anyone have any comments about that? Big Jeff, do you have a comment? Uh, no, I'm good. Everyone's good. Beautiful. All right. So, guys, on our slide 146, uh, you can see pretty clear that the uh, there was plenty of sunlight. When uh, Nicole took these photographs, the RAV4 is partially concealed and poorly so as well. Um, that's a very, very poor attempt uh, to try and conceal a vehicle. Um, you can clearly see the Toyota RAV4 um, uh, sign at the back of the vehicle on the spare tire. Uh, it, it's clear that whoever tried to disguise this it really wasn't almost disguising the vehicle. Big Jeff, what would you say? <laughs> uh, it was, it's very poorly disguised, <clears throat> number one. Uh, num my, uh, num number two, if I may uh, go back to a comment you made earlier about the possibility that, uh, that Nicole Sturm used a cell phone camera to take the pictures. Yes. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe that the cell phone cameras of 2005 <clears throat> had the resolution uh, oh, yes. to take the take the pictures um, that we have, uh, especially the ones that Henberry released. Uh, yes, just not just they, they just that, that those were taken with a um, the a equivalent of camera. a yeah digital camera that had decent resolution that probably at the time yeah. cost four or five hundred dollars. Right, um, and then, yeah, and, and my my final comment with regard to how well is it disguised. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually sort of interesting where it is. If you look at the pictures um, that were recently released, the location of the RAV is actually uh, in a very good spot, probably the best spot on the whole salvage yard, if you were yes. trying to conceal it from an aerial search. Um, 
and that might be a, one of the reasons why they uh, why it was planted there because and they tried to put stuff on it to give it the appearance they were trying to hide it from the from for the, from the aerial search as if they were more concerned about a search from the air as they were uh, a search from the ground. Yes, yeah, very good point. Thank you, Big Jeff. BB, do you have a comment? I I would say not disguise, but neon sign. Yeah, it appears to be that way. Because uh, if Christian, you're walking through that yes. junkyard, all that crap up against it, you would immediately it makes, notice it stick that. out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Yeah, because it's the only vehicle in the whole junkyard right. that's got all these components yes. and bits and pieces um, attached to the Rav Four. But it's interesting because you've got a hood of a vehicle on the side of the Rav Four. Why not put it at the back to disguise? The fact that it's got RAV4 Toyota on the spare tire. And isn't the hood even on the far side of it? So, like... Yes, it is. It's not even on the junkyard side. It's on the the yes. quarry side. Yeah. Yeah, which is, which is rather bizarre. Christy, do you have a comment? It's more of an X marks a spot than a hiding spot. Yeah. Yeah, and thank, thank you, Christy. And we all know that... Um, Pam and Nicole Sturm found that RAV4 uh, in record time. So the only other comment I want to make is um, it is very interesting that the um, glass on the driver's side um, is clear. And we know that Pam Sturm herself was a private investigator with more than nine years of experience. And we all know we've been through this many times. It's remarkable that no one at the salvage yard had noted any blood anywhere. But my final comment is, if you look at Queso, there is mentioning of investigators and uh, other law enforcement detecting droplets of blood in other vehicles on the salvage yard. So blood was noted in other vehicles. Obi-Wan, do you have a comment? Yeah, I kind of wanted to mention about this um, debris that's sitting up on top of this vehicle and leaning yes. against it because I believe when Pam actually found the vehicle, it didn't have this. Uh, there might have been a few things that were on there, but I think some of the things that were leaning against it was basically to hold a tarp down because uh, they had a, the tarp on. You know, I mean, there was yes one in the back of a truck that was directly right behind it. Uh, and some of the other photos you can see actually what appears to be two tarps already on the property. Right. In the same vicinity. And yes. you actually see them using this tarp when they claimed that uh, they were going to tarp it up because of the weather. They were afraid that it was going to rain, but it had Correct. already rained and, they didn't have it. They, they didn't have it covered up then, you know. That correct, correct. It, a big, it, big Jeff, do you have a comment? It, it, I do. In, in in fairness, she does say on the phone call to Bagel that it's all covered up. Um, right. Right. So I mean, they, they obviously could have coordinated that uh, beforehand. Right. Right. I'm not sure why they would. Right. What, what's what's the value of that? Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting that someone went to the trouble, so to speak, of putting branches uh, and other uh, bits and pieces, obviously from the salvage yard, and yet it's such a poor attempt to try and disguise this vehicle. Uh, it stood out like a sore thumb, uh, as BB had alluded to. A uh, big Jeff, do you have another it, comment? Yeah, it, it, it just it just seems like that they were attempting to hide it to give the appearance that it was being hid from an aerial search, which made it stick yes. out like a neon sign for a ground search. At the, <laughs> well, and right. I don't necessarily think that Stephen and Brendan were smart enough to think that the cops would be coming by in, a, in an aerial yes. search. Or, yeah, I just don't <laughs> think that. Well, yes. <laughs> Mill Billy. Mil Thank you, Big Jeff. Mill Billy. Why do you think Kratz tried to suppress all the media footage? He subpoenaed all of it. Yes, yes, and and I suppose in a way, in a way, by subpoenaing all the the footage, you've got control of what is seen in the public. And he I tried, suppose 
he tried, Sorry. He, he tried doing the same thing to Netflix. Yes. He subpoenaed both the directors and producers. That's right. And they completely just ignored him. Yeah. Yeah. Very good thank, point. Thank God. Um, Sammy, do you have a comment? Well, there was some chatter in the chat about the amount of rust on the rotors. Do y'all care to comment on that? Uh, there doesn't yeah, appear that, to be that, a lot that, of rust on the rotors. <laughs> that, that's another sign that leads me to believe that it, this car came from a junkyard. The, yeah. There are, there are uh, guilters who say that th what you're seeing is not so much uh, rust there, but that's just sort of the the way the lighting is sort of an after effect of a of a flash. Um, no, I'm talking, look, about, if, talking about on the rotors and yeah. And no. I, I, I'm going to interject here a little bit. The amount yes, of please. rust, the amount of rust that I see on those rotors, is completely normal for a car being exposed to the elements in Wisconsin at that time of year, it's more of a surface rust. The little metal particles yeah. that sit on top of the rotor, we yes. don't see the rust on our own vehicles because we're daily driving. Let your vehicle sit exposed to the elements for a couple days and you'll have that same rust on your rotors. It goes away as soon as it's driven. Right. Yeah. I, I had rotor, brand new rotors in, uh, my vehicle actually got impounded for a couple weeks. But when I got my vehicle back, I was sure that they had swapped my rotors out because the, the rotors that I had put on it were brand new. And, uh, but uh, they were the ones that I got and it didn't take long for it to rust. And it depends yeah, but, on what but, type of rotor. But you, you said, you made. said, you said a couple of weeks, the car had been sitting there for five days. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, and it depends just, on what type of rotor you get also because you can get higher grade ones that don't rust and you can get the cheap ones that will rust. Okay. Wrong. I just checked with my husband. We live here in Wisconsin. And my car's yes. been sitting for like two months and we aren't rich, so we usually buy the more cheaper ones. And he says, yes. my rotors will have rust on them now because it's sat for a couple of months. But that um, his car... The one he drives every day won't because it's been driven every day. And that's right. here in Wisconsin. And once again, we're at this time of year right now. Yes. It's not gonna it's not gonna take months for that rust to form. It'll take days, I promise. Days. Right. The rust so will start to form in days. So it's more like an oxidation process that's taking Correct. place with the metal? Correct. It's just oh. and it sounds orange. like it sounds like the quality of the rotor would matter <laughs> as well. Correct. The, the yes. quality, the age, it, it, there's a lot of factors. It is completely feasible for those rotors to have that rust appearance after several days of not being driven. So Thank really, you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, so, so, really, so really just exposure to the elements would do something like that. Correct. Right. Uh, Milbilly, do you <clears> want to <throat> make, make a comment in regards to the new photos that have been released in terms of like we can actually see the engine bay now yes. right what what can you tell me do you have any comments about the age of those components that you see in the engine bay well i really haven't been looking at the components in the engine i've just been analyzing the vin on the firewall yes and i've been all over the interior photos comparing with the other photos Something's not right. Like, for instance, they state that they removed the front drive shaft. The car does yeah. not have a front drive shaft. It has axles. But somebody disconnected the rear drive shaft because we see no, it in new yeah. photos. It's being yes. held up by a bungee. Yes, you can actually see it hanging down as well. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what struck me was the very poor condition of the vehicle. Uh, that's rather remarkable considering that um, Teresa Horbach was meant to be a professional photographer and, of course, images everything. That car looks like it's been either sitting in a salvage yard for quite a while or it's been driven through some very rough terrain. And um, the, way, the way that Tom yeah. Pierce talks about, how, about that car and her, 
How yes. she was so proud. The very first car that she purchased herself. Yes. And why is there so much missing? The the interior panels, the center console cover. Uh, how does the carpet the in the back? How does the carpet in the back come untucked? Yes. It wouldn't yeah. unless you took that panel off. Yes. Uh, and also, Big Jeff mentioned the fact that you've got the blinker light that's obviously been smashed and the front fender. It hits something with a lot of velocity and force because the actual blinker light popped out. BB, do you have a comment? It, well, if the car was on a loan still and she was making payments on it, technically, the condition that car's in, it would be underwater. Uh, they call it gap. You need gap insurance now when you right. buy a car besides <laughs> your regular insurance because if your car gets ran down looking, you might still owe more on it than the car's actually worth. Right. Okay. Yeah. And the, con and the condition of the vehicle looks pretty rough, which right. is rather remarkable that she's met. The, the interesting thing here, guys, is that um, everyone who was asked about the car said that the car looks shiny and new and in good condition. Obi-Wan, do you have a comment? Yeah, I wanted to talk about the bumper and the damage that was on there. Of uh, course. And the side damage that I had, I, uh, well, we've seen. I, I believe that uh, the damage that's on the um, driver's side front fender, I think that was like pre-existing and that it was there before the bumper damage was, was done. Right. Um, because the, the, the photo that I see with Teresa standing in front of it, I see the damage to the side, but I don't see no damage to the front bumper. And then when you yes. get it onto Avery's property or you get it onto uh, Calumet's property while it's in their possession, you, I mean, you have yeah. the front damage. So it has to be a pre-existing damage from what I'm looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mil Thank you, Obi-Wan. Mill Billy, well, do you have a comment? Well, if there's really nothing shady going on, why in Queso does it state that at 5 o'clock, Leslie Lemieux was mm -hmm. contacted about the missing person? Why don't they stay at 2.37 p.m., Karen Halbach reported her daughter missing, blah, 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 blah. No, they don't yes. say that at all. They completely leave that out. Yep. So why and, why why and, do you think that's the case, Bill Billy? Well, there there's over two and a half hours that I can see missing that things that transpire on a third, and there's a yes. reason for that because they're trying to hide something. Yes, yes. I mean, this you way. look at the search warrant that Mark Weger submitted to the judge. He states that Karen Halbach reported her daughter missing at five p.m. That's a lie. Yeah. Yes, he also yes. goes on to say that when she reported her missing, the car is dark blue. That's a lie, too. Yes. And yes. there's another document in the state of Wisconsin versus Stave and Avery, which states the same thing. So we got two yes. documents in lies. Yes, there's no, no doubt. Uh, Bibi, do you have a comment? Thank you, Milby. Yeah. Uh, so in... Um... The interview where they interview Chuck Avery, they're talking about, well, you got to chop a car to crush it, which all he says is you don't have to take the engine out. You just have to take the wheels, the battery, and preferably the gas tank, but he also implies you don't even have to do that. You don't have and, to do any uh, of that. You want to do all that if you don't want to get fined. And, right. and, and they also keep telling him, well, if that car was in the bay getting the wheels taken off it or whatever, getting prepared to be crushed, it was in really good condition. Wouldn't somebody have questioned why it was sure. in there to get ready to get crushed? They kept saying how good of condition. No, this car was in really good condition. Yes. Yeah, something doesn't make any sense here. A big Thank you, BB. Big Jeff, do you have a comment? Yeah, my favorite document is the one uh, that from Manitowoc County where they have the RAV uh, taken into custody on uh, the 3rd of November and uh -huh. Teresa Hall back listing it listed as kidnapped. Ask you where did that come from if there's no funny business? And it's listed as dark green. Yeah. <laughs> and I think Remaker is the one that entered that info in their CAD system. Right. 
Okay. Uh, and then there's another document that I've seen, a dot document, in which it says that the car is um, Mystic Teal Mika. So we've got some real funny business going on here in which all the initial reports uh, mention a dark green RAV4. Suddenly, uh, when uh, Pam of God finds the RAV4, she's taken aback because it's definitely not dark green, it's blue. And I think she was trying to give a cryptic message to Pagel uh, about finding this particular car that clearly was not dark green. And then Milbilly, I think you alluded to the fact that all of a sudden the car went from dark green to blue. Yeah. So to keep everything consistent, yeah, Pam, Pam God is the first one to question the color. Yes. And then when they talked to Bobby Dassey on the 5th, same day, he says yes. it's a Honda CRV and it's bluish green. Yes, yes. And in actual fact, if you have a look at the testimonies, uh, Kratz got so confused that when he was talking to, I believe it was Bobby, he, he mentioned, uh, Oh, and did you see a green, blue, blue green, uh, teal car? So even he didn't know what color the car was meant to be, um, which was rather interesting. Mill Billy, and you can follow in the trial transcripts the car slowly changes from being bluish green to straight blue. Yes. Yes, but in one of the CASA reports, I'm not sure whether it was Tyson, he had mentioned green about eight times. So he was looking looking at the uh, Toyota RAV4. Yeah, even in so, the CASA report, the, the, yes. officer, the officers state that they're stationed to stand in front of the green vehicle. Correct, correct. So how, how does it go from being green to blue? Well, why why would her parents put out a false report of a color? It's all over the news. They have flyers printed. Correct. And in actual fact, they've even got um, a video footage of a similar type of vehicle that clearly looks dark green in color. So maybe it would be interesting if people had actually seen uh, the real Toyota RAV4 but never reported it because it was blue. And, and, techni and technically, her mom doesn't say Toyota RAV4. She just says Toyota RAV. Cause That's correct. The RAVs were called RAVs until the RAV4 came out. The RAV4 is because it's a four-door now. That's where the four correct. comes into play. Yeah, correct. BB, do you have a comment? Um, yeah, I, I think it got covered, though, so I'm good. Right. Okay, then. Well, look, guys, I think... <laughs> Uh, I think, um, oh, Obi-Wan, do you have a quick comment? I don't know if this is true or not, but I actually did see this. Uh, somebody had uh, searched the uh, Teresa's VIN number to see uh, what it was registered, what, what the vehicle was registered to. And yes. what I saw was it said a Toyota 4Runner. Right. Oh, so, and also, also, it was um, the older brother, Tim, that helped make up the flyer. Right. So it's not only okay. the mother saying it's green, and it's the older brother, too. Why is the flyer dated for the second? Yeah, that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to me, it indicates, I hate to say it, but it indicates foreknowledge. Um and also of a big setup. Uh, my own personal feelings now is that there are at least two different RAV4s. Uh, and the way I resolve this, I believe that what we have is a hybrid RAV4. That is, it's got some parts of Teresa's original vehicle and a stand-in vehicle. What I believe is the original uh, vehicle are the internal panels um, containing Teresa's blood, or in this case, the victim's blood. You can't explain the carpet. You can't explain why the carpet in the vehicle at the back is so clean 
yet you can clearly see blood on one of the panels. And Milbili, correct me if I'm wrong, but it appears that someone has gone through that rav and unbolted panels and taken it apart. Yeah, yeah. like the, the, the things that are missing are the things that would be taken off a corner junkyard first. Yes. Like the, the, the rear cover panels, the center console hatch. Yes. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. So to me, uh, the way I resolve this is that the vehicle that we're looking in the crime lab uh, is indeed a hybrid RAV, as in they didn't swap the entire RAV. They swapped uh, the exterior with a substitute RAV that went from dark green to blue, but they kept the original panels on the inside. Bibi, do you have a comment? Yeah, some people were talking in the chat about um, the, how in the pictures where they show the blood in the back of the RAV, how it's so red, where if it had been days or uh, hours, it would have been turning brown already. Like they dumped the blood in there and then took a picture of it. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things which are which are real funny business going on with the with the blood. There's no question about yeah, that. Yeah, but did did Cherry Colhain actually test those samples? Well, I don't believe she tested all of them. According to Colhain, what she did is that um, first of all, what they do is they go around the vehicle looking for a blood, uh, uh, obvious signs of blood. Uh, but first, they take photographs. I don't touch anything first. They take photographs. But I have an awful feeling that what we're looking at are not in situ photographs. That is, the <coughs> photographs appear to have been processed. The blood spots appear to have been processed. Then they take a photograph. Obi-Wan, do you have a comment? Yeah. I kind of got the impression when I compared the the RAV4 that's sitting inside the crime lab that we see and the one that's on Avery's property. Yes. I think like what, what happened was is I believe that those photos were actually taken before Whoa. they planted the RAV4 on the property, on Avery's property. Like if it was a hybrid and they swap parts out from yes. another RAV4 – that fo that photo that we're looking at with the RAV4 in the Wisconsin State Crime Lab would have been taken pr before uh, the RAV was planted on planted. the property. Well, you know what, uh, Obi-Wan, that actually explains why the RAV4 is in that orientation. Because how, how do you explain the fact that it's in that orientation if it's been taken off a trailer with its drive shaft uh, taken apart? How, right. Why is it facing? Why is it facing in that direction? Uh, BB, do you have a comment? Yeah, I also think the blood that should have been tested for the EDTA uh, yes. is that right? Should have EDTA, been the blood in the right. back of the wrath, not the. Yeah. yeah. Well, you see, here's the problem, right? Not all the samples were tested, right? Now I know that Sheree Cohen took blood swabs. But she even stated in court that not all the stains were tested. So I know that uh, I can't remember whether there were six or eight blood samples that had uh, that were consistent with Teresa Horbach's DNA profile. And uh, I don't I don't even know if Cherie Cohen tested all the blood swabs that um, were taken from Stephen. Uh, you know the the six blood droplets. I think they did a sample of them to to show that you had the victim you had the suspect's blood within the vehicle you had the victim's saliva from the cherry pepsi can and i don't believe that all the samples were tested in fact the fbi only tested three obi-wan yeah, I think there's another thing to tell that this is kind of a hybrid vehicle is the windshield the windshield, uh, yes. When you look at that photo, you can see that the the uh, windshield wipers are in the up position. They're not laying or resting on the windshield itself, which means yes. that they could have po possibly swapped 
a windshield from another RAV to that one because yes. something is definitely wrong with the Valvoline sticker that's inside there and the window right. codes that belong to that windshield are laminated codes while the rest of the windows have etching, like white etching. Yeah, correct. We have black right. lamination against white etching. It just doesn't match. Yeah, uh, and I suppose in a way, the way to disguise the fact that you've got a hybrid RAV is to take out the panels and crush the rest of the car. That way you can't prove it. So you keep the panels, which belong to the original RAV4. They're the panels that have been, uh, well, tainted with blood. So therefore, if you're going to retest it, you can see that there is blood on those panels. But you can't get all the documentation for the rest of the RAV, right? So therefore, if it's a hybrid, to me, the reason why you would use a hybrid if something really bad happened to the original Toyota RAV4, right. either got uh, either in a real bad accident or someone was shot in the RAV4 and there was blood everywhere, right? So, uh, that would give it away because if the Toyota RAV4 was present off the salvage yard, that's going to that's going to be a huge issue for the state. Uh, Mill Billy, do you have a comment? Well, uh, if you guys look at these new photos uh, from this Wisconsin State Patrol, it seems like they were trying to reconstruct uh, some kind of scene on Cuss Road. We got yellow and red spray paint on the ground. Right. And if nothing happened there, why are they going back the next day? Why is the whole area taped off? Why are they taking so many aerial photos? Why do we have aerial photos from the 7th, but they're from Calumet County, but basically Manitowoc took the photos. They had them printed on the giant boards, and then Calumet, instead of taking the original photos they had, they took pictures of the pictures. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a very good question, Mill Billy. Uh, if I could just make a quick comment. To me, the new photographs that we see revealed how important Cuss Road Deer Camp actually was because it's quite clear that a helicopter has been flying above just about all day taking uh, aerial pictures and a surveillance team took measurements of that entire area so it had to have meant that something of significance took place no one's going to do all that work for just a tree stump right it's you know it's rather a real bad excuse that uh, was given uh, in in court that oh look there was nothing there to be seen and normally what happens in Australia, if there's an accident or a vehicle has been abandoned or whatever, they do use spray paint on the asphalt well, to if mark you, where if the vehicle is. If you, read case, if you read Queso, they completely d downplay Cuss Road at all. Uh, correct. There's like maybe three pages. Yeah, yes, correct. And if correct. you read the Manitowoc summary report, they don't even mention Cuss Road. They mention White Cedar, which is a street right off yeah. of Cuss Road. Correct. So they're Correct. definitely hiding something, and it's for a reason. Oh, there's, there's no doubt. The new, the new pictures for me crystallize that something of significance took place. And you can now clearly see uh, how they uh, did roadblocks using patrol cars. They made sure that nobody came in, nobody came out. And there's a huge amount of crime scene tape. Uh, and I think, um, even though we're not going to discuss it right now, but it appears that um, light towers uh, were erected around the uh, dig site, right? And so no yeah. one's going to do that. You, no you one's going to do that. Milby, you can, do you have a you comment? You can see in the photos they have a total of eight lights right and at one point you see they got four on the side of the road and four by the dig site 
and other right. photos they move right. the, the lights by the dig site and place them by the other ones because it goes from there being four lights there to eight yes yes uh, and also the photos are quite revealing because there there are night shots and you can see that the whole area where the dig site is is really brightly illuminated yeah. well that's that was the early morning they started taking okay. photos at six something in the morning and we're in the air till about 9 p.m or 9 a.m they're in the air for about three hours right so we okay. have three hours worth of photos yes yes uh i, I mean to me it's mind-blowing um no one's going to do all that work and no one is is going to do all that aerial photography and surveillance for a, a tree stump i'm sorry guys it's like but they spent more time on that alleged tree stump processing yes. that scene. What they should have did that with everything else they did: the car, yep. the bones, everything. There's no documentation, but the key, the plates, and her car. Correct. Everything else, right. there's no documentation of discovery whatsoever. Yep. yep. Uh, to to me, uh, guys, it's pretty obvious that. Um, the MTSO, the investigators tried to expunge from the record what happened at Cuss Road Deer Camp. They kept it very, very quiet. And in actual fact, when Ken Kratz asked uh, Colburn about what had happened at Cuss Road or White Cedar Road, he said nothing. Colburn said, no, nah, nothing of significance, nothing to see here, which is rather interesting because both him and Link were called to a cuss road twice, once in the morning and once in the evening. And it's remarkable that both Colburn and Link admitted helping to dig out uh, the burial site, the so-called false burial site. So um, remember that Colburn had a digital camera and he obviously had taken photographs of everything. I would say that every photograph that he's got or took are off the record. Has anyone, panel, has anyone actually seen any photograph that Colburn took? Has anyone got a comment? Bill Billy? No. Uh, he, <laughs> he's the one who took the picture of the audio Vox phone on the side of the turnaround, so. Yes, with that Pam of God as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I do have... I do have a question Sammy. here um, yes. on the chat, and they, this is Rhonda South is saying maybe this is rhetorical, but why did no one ever ask the state patrol for their three hours of photos? Yeah. Yeah, that's a very, very good point. I, 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 th I think the, uh, the, the – I, I, don't, I don't even know um, what document that somebody found that made them aware that there were these photos even asked for. Well, so, there's there's the uh, 565 Wisconsin State Patrol re summary report that came yes. out right before all these photos did. Yeah, so that's that true. might have something to do with it. And yeah, the biggest question of all, out of all the stuff we're seeing now, all these new photos, all this new audio, did Dean and Jerry have this too? And if they did, why did they not use it? Um, do you think? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Big Jeff, do you have a comment? I just, I can't believe that they had it. Because well, it's just incredible. They, they questioned, they questioned Colburn on the stand about Cuss Road. Yeah, uh, correct. Dead tea stump, uh, nothing to see here. And that would have been the time to sort of sla smack down yeah. those aerial photos of well, that dig site. Well, if they yeah. truly did analyze that audio, they would have heard the background of that Colburn call, someone saying, the car is here. Yeah. Correct. They completely Correct. dropped the ball. That's why Zellner's filing for assistant, ineffective assistance yep. of counsel. Yeah. That and the fact that both of them agreed in their affidavits that they fucked up. Yes. Yes. Correct. Correct. Uh, BB, do you have a comment? Well, just about the cell phone. I don't believe we ever see the photo, though, that um, Colburn took on the side of the road of the audio box phone. The only one we see is the one where it's already, like, in custody, and they take yeah. a nice picture of it then. Yeah. Right, yeah. Jeff? 
That, that's right. That's why it made me laugh because that's immediately what I think of right? when I think of Coburn. And, and if, if you want to see my presentation about the audio box, take a look at the YouTube yes. channel. Yes, thank you, Big Jeff, for that reminder. Yeah, look, the, there's no doubt. Um, you can see within the court um, during the trials, uh, anything to do with Cuss Road was minimized. Anything to do with the Manitowoc County gravel pit was minimized. Anything to do with um, the Toyota RAV4 being found or seen uh, outside of the Avery Salvage Yard was basically suppressed glossed over so the main focus was to keep everything on the avery salvage yard well, these photographs clearly show that that cannot be the case um there was definitely a lot of activity on cuss road it has to be it can't just be a fake burial site so guys Look, we can talk for we can talk for another additional hour just on our first slide. But guys, if we can advance, <laughs> if we can if we can advance, guys, uh, because well, the, the the running joke is we'll be still doing our podcast and the boys will be home <laughs> hugging their mamas. So let's see if we can go to slide 147, which actually dovetails really nicely what we've been talking about. We have a look at slide 147. Um, Stephen Avery here was interrogated on November the 9th. And if you haven't heard the interrogation or seen the interrogation tape, you must. This is a must watch. It took place on November the 9th. And basically you have um, Wiegert and Fassbender who interrogate Stephen. Emil um, Billy, do you want to have a quick comment first? Yeah, I actually went and uh, took the part where after they come back in the room, yes, they sit down and they start talking to Stephen about the warrant they have for the gun possession. Yes. And then they ask him, do you still want to talk to us some more? And they're like, yeah. And then they really lay into him. Yes, they do. They do, Mill Billy. And I just want to let the listeners know um, how this, very quickly, how this interview or interrogation session transpired. The first half uh, went really smoothly, as in um, there were no accusations. There was basically uh, like a discovery session. Okay, Stephen, tell us what happened. What do you think? And he denied everything from the start. He never stated that, you know, he was involved in any way. Uh, there's no mention of Brendan as far as I'm aware, nothing. And it's interesting that uh, Wiegert and Fassbender basically gave Stephen the proposition. They said to him, oh, maybe you accidentally killed Teresa, as in she was in the salvage yard, she hit her head, you panicked, but it wasn't your fault. That was the one option. The other option, and Stephen said, oh, of course, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Uh, and then they said to him, oh, so you're a cold-blooded killer then. Which one is it? You accidentally killed her. And believe it or not, Fassbend and Wiget said, we will understand if that's what happened to her. Right? So you can imagine the scenario. <laughs> you can imagine the scenario, guys. Of uh, yes, um, Teresa Horbach fell down, hit her head on the rock. I panicked. So, what I did with my nephew, we raped her, we shot her 10 or 11 times, we cut her up into pieces, we put her in the rav, we took her out of the rav, and we cremated her and we spread her bones. Do you still believe me it was an accident? <laughs> well, well, that in the crux of things right there is the beginning of the read technique. Yes, yes. So with 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 the read technique, they give you two options. They give you options. They give you an out clause. So the interrogators, uh, Wigan and Fassbender, were quite happy for for Stephen to say, "Look, guys, I'm very sorry. We accident or I accidentally killed her." I'm not a cold-blooded killer, 
but I did all the following to her accidentally. But the amazing thing is this, and uh, uh, Mill Billy will back me up. Things turned nasty the moment Stephen said that he'd spoken to Tammy Weber. Mill Billy, do you want to take it over from here? Yeah. <clears throat> he, he mentions that he heard the car was planted. They ask who. He tells them Tammy Weaver is the one that informed him of that. They immediately, yes. they immediately walk out the room. Who is Tammy Weaver? Uh, it's uh, a friend of the family. Yes. And as soon as they come back in, it's, it's like they were delaying them the whole time to get the warrant for his arrest. Because they don't mention anything about that until they come back in the room. And then Fassbender says, well, we have the warrant. Do you want to see it right here? And then he hands yeah. it to him. And then they just, like, they start off by saying, well, we found bones. And then they yes. don't mention bones anymore. From their point on, they mention a body, a body, a body, a body. Yeah. A body. The, the dogs took us to where the body was. The dogs took us where the plates were. Yep. Yep. Uh, what I wanted to point out uh, is the complete contrast when they come back in, when they came back into the room. They hone into Stephen big time and throw all sorts of accusations his way, including by saying, oh, what is your DNA doing in her yep. car? And he this even says, he even says, That's well, Manitowoc's planting and everything. You guys are finding it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Big Jeff, do you have a comment? Well, I think you were probably getting to it, but they asked him, uh, what, what is her DNA doing in your house? Correct. And of course, <laughs> was there Correct. any of her DNA found in his house? No. no. And then they say they, they found a bloody palm print. And he was like, bloody palm print? What are you talking about? Yes. Yes. So with the read technique, uh, the investigators are allowed to lie. So there's no hassles at all. From their part, they're allowed to throw any type of lie towards you in order to entrap you, in order for you to uh, do a confession. So Mark Wiget said, you know, what's your DNA doing in her car? This is one day before they actually tested it, right? So uh, Wiget was throwing all sorts of accusations. But credit to Stephen, the way he behaved, he completely had no idea what they were talking about. But the interesting that thing was that Stephen mentioned that a cop had placed the rev there. Lo and behold, what do we get in court? Andrew Colburn. And he got caught red-handed on a phone call asking or calling in the plate number of Teresa's Toyota RAV4. Mill Billy, do you have a comment? I have that phone call if you'd like to hear it. Well, let's hear it. <laughs> let's hear it, guys. Yes, yeah, definitely. This, what, why is it that he called that in on his personal cell phone? Why didn't he use his police radio? Um, I, he probably 
he probably didn't think it was being recorded. Christy, do you have a comment? I think my favorite part was at the trial when he tried to say that he didn't know it was a 99 Toyota that they told him and Buting played yeah. it again. Or was it was it Strang or Buting? Strang. Right? Strang. Strang. Strang played it again. And no, he clearly said 99 Toyota. He knew what that car was because he was looking at it. And he lies yeah. in trial, stating this is the first time my integrity has ever been questioned. Uh, what about your deposition you did? Yep. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no doubt, guys. To me, this was a turning point. He lied. He directly lied in court. He knew he got caught out because you can tell by his body language and he cracked his knuckles and he looked down and he turned red. He got caught. Uh, and we're talking about calling in the plates on November the 3rd, which is the same date that's in the report. Is that right, uh, Mill Billy? The 3rd? Yeah, yeah. And the, Manit the, Manitou day. the Manitowoc Summer has her car as a 99 dark green RAV Toyota, and it's in their custody, and she's yes. listed as kidnapped. Well, that actually raises a very important po point, and the fact there is... They obviously didn't find her body in the car. If nope. they said kidnapped, that means she's missing. They may well, have found the vehicle, but they didn't find her. Well, as soon as they find her car, you got Jacobs, one, saying, do we have a body yet? And then, yeah. do yeah. we have Stephen Avery in custody? Yeah. And then when they call Link to notify him that they found the car on the property, his first thing he says, well, if the car's there, she's got to be there somewhere. Yeah, correct, correct. Big Jeff, do you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I, I do. I just uh, find it interesting that, um, you know, if, if, if indeed that this is the, the case where they found the car, didn't find her, but listed her as kidnapped. Kidnapped, Wouldn't yeah. you think that, you know, uh, if, if this would just say a car, for example, that they found at the airport locked, they wouldn't list anybody kidnapped. I mean, she could be hightailing it out of there. Even if they found uh, it anywhere correct. locked but in good condition, you still can't make that, call as to whether she was going to be a missing person or, or, or whether she had just kind of gone off with somebody else. If now, but if there was damage to the car, right, if uh, maybe the, the, the windshield was broken and it had signs of being in a car accident or uh, yeah. some signs that she had actually you know, a foul play that she had been, uh, you know, yeah. kidnapped, that's when they would, and, and wouldn't, wouldn't that um, be a reason why they'd have to potentially introduce another RAV4? Because there was Correct. too much forensic evidence or too much damage Correct. to the car to be able to use the one um, that Correct. they found. Yes, correct. I 100% I agree with you. Uh, Bibi, do you have a comment? Yeah, um, Mobily. Um, what's that bit about do you speak Spanish, Andy, in that phone call? Uh, I think she's just referring to a call she might have got. Oh, because uh, before people were saying that he could call it the Spanish line. No, there's no Spanish line. There's okay. two. There's two lines to Manitowoc dispatch. Two phone numbers. Right. And then she said that bit about I don't want to get in trouble. It was kind of weird. But you know. it, it, if you listen to the dispatch audio and transmission for the third for Manitowoc, Colborn does in fact have them run a plate. The dispatcher states that. You know, he does this over the radio. And she tells him, I got that plate info for you, Andy. He tells her to hold it. You want to spell hold. it? Now, when Remaker asks, does Andy know what that plate info came back to? Is he referring to that plate that he called in over the radio or the plate that he called in on the phone? Right. If I may, I kind of want to say that one. with, with Je uh, Big Jeff's uh, question where he says um, about why would he be using his personal phone? The reason why he would be using his personal phone <clears throat> is because if there was bystanders around, which we know that he was con uh, Colburn was contacted by Conicky. They they seen each other at at a uh, gas station. He gave yes. him the tip of where he saw the vehicle, and Andy. Yeah, no, that's had Kevin. That, 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 that's that's Kevin Ramlow. Or Kevin Ramlow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Well, there was Kevin Ramlow that placed it at the 147. There was Irvin Conicky and Fabian. 
Um, either one of them could have been there standing at the 147 in the presence of Colburn uh, while he was making this call. Had he been on his police standard issue radio, they would have heard the vehicle come back to a missing person, Teresa Halbach. If Colburn wanted this information withheld from anybody standing around, he would have used his personal phone so only he heard Okay. Uh, well, the plate would have came back to. Answer, yeah, me point. This. answer me this. Why is it that we hear him running to... You cut out for a second, sorry. Why do we have him running George Zipper's name? Colborn talks to Stephen Avery by himself, but they all wait and all gather up and all go see Zipper. Mm. I believe it's to throw it off. Um, I I can't really speak on that, but that's that's my assumption because they were the close. That's where they decided to meet up. They decided to meet up right across the street at the church. I mean, my, my guess, my, my guess would be to Bill Billy's question uh, is what what how they would answer that question is because uh, Zipper was violent, uh, drunk, belligerent, saying his dog is going to eat their feet off. Uh, but I think yeah, the maybe they're afraid of the dog. But you hear <laughs> maybe, Col- you the hear, real answer. You is, hear you hear Colburn, that's the cabal. You hear Colburn on the phone saying, "Yeah, I guess I uh, she was there to take pictures of his son's car." So obviously. He talked to somebody before they talked to him in person. Right. You, you hear in the case of dispatch that, oh, apparently she was in two places in Manitowoc, one of them being Stephen Avery. I guess that's her, <clears throat> her friend. And the other one is George Zipperer. But I guess he got an attorney. Dietering is on his way out there to talk to him. Yes. I think the real reason is probably that Colbert found the rab and they needed more than one person to hide it, right? Yeah, yeah, but if we if we're talking about a hybrid rav, whatever he found, it must have been damaged in some way, right? And clearly, right. he didn't find he didn't find Teresa Horbach's body. Well, I can right? address that. Obi Wan, uh, Carnegie, uh, Irvin Carnegie had uh, given a statement to where he said that. The rav that was on the 147 was damaged. He said that there was a hole that was seen uh, yeah, in the yeah, windshield, yeah. and that there was a hole in the driver's side. He didn't say a bullet hole. He didn't say that it was a busted out windshield. He basically puts a hole in the windshield and in the driver's side door. If he can see a hole, then obviously he must be physically on scene to have visually seen something like that well there's a report of the car being there by the people that live right across the street right the car's there the first the second the third fourth right. never seen seven, again eight eight different witnesses why why, why are manitowoc sheriff's department calling paul rabas three times right. on the fourth and this is after Colburn's call. Why is Paul Robbins after me? There as a fire chief. Who is Paul Robbins? The Maryville Fire Chief slash he also owns a, a body shop and tow company. Right. Yep. Yep. And this and is five hours after Colburn makes this call. Right. So I mean, to me, it's pretty obvious that there's really good, strong evidence that the Toyota RAV4 was found off the Avery salvage yard. There's no, there's no question about that. And Colburn lied. He perjured himself on the stand. He had to have. He had to have. So the question is this. When did the plan hatch to frame Steve Avery? panel any idea as soon as we get called Colborn. right as right. soon as he got out yeah. of jail <laughs> <laughs> no, i think soon, before he got out of jail i think before he got out of jail well it took him a year to test that hair yeah right. me too i well, agree. I, believe, I think I it all it started happened. it all started september of 04 well, with the fire 
No, and when he that, opened out his lawsuit against the Manslaughter awesome. Sheriff's Department. Oh, yes. Yep. Oh, correct. Correct. Because shortly after that, he's all over the news talking about his wrongful conviction and yes. how he's suing the Manitowoc Sheriff's Department for the wrongdoings. Yes. Yes. And, it's and the politicians the were lining up, too. Is that, and that's the real thing. People like that, the, the, uh, the sheriffs, they can sniff when the political winds are blowing in a certain way. And yes. uh, they needed to do something, and it didn't matter how big, big it was because they were getting pretty desperate. Yes. Uh, now, Christy, if I can get a comment from you, uh, you're one of the uh, unlucky people who have read Ken Kratz's book. <laughs> uh, what, what was your impression of how Ken Kratz felt about the notoriety that Stephen was gaining? He was extremely jealous of that. You could tell he was seething with anger. You could you could feel it in the words he wrote. And yes. you really have to read the whole book to understand. You can feel his tone change. Like I can picture him hunched over his laptop, beating at those keys while he's writing about Stephen's fame. He hated it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, I agree. I read the book as well. And there's no, no doubt about it that um, he held a, a, a personal vendetta and, and a disdain and a dislike for the fact that Stephen Avery... Uh, 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 just a common guy was getting all this notoriety uh, and exposure and uh, greasing the palms of all the politicians who were all around him and using him as a tool to advance their own <laughs> agendas. It was remarkable. A big Jeff. I think the thing about that, uh, that that's very important, is that many times uh, in, in politics you get you know one side saying something and you know say that you know doesn't really matter if, <laughs> I'm not making a political statement here so much as if, um, uh, you know a different kind of statement it could have been I think yes. it was a Republican but when, when, and, and a lot of times you, you find you know butting of the heads between the political parties but in this case it was no it was un unanimously lining up uh, in support of Stephen Avery and more about yes. arguing. Uh, you know, who is supporting him more rather than, you know, he's not deserving any of this, which is what, what probably Correct. really set the alarm bells off in the sheriff's Correct. office. Correct. Uh, Christy, do you have a comment? I, I want to mention that in those calls that um, Kaboom foia'd um, a couple weeks ago that we've all just recently listened to, even the family has picked up that Kratz had it in for Stephen from minute one. Yes. Um, Dolores yes. makes several comments to Stephen after they received some information in the mail about Ken Kratz being dirty from a supporter. And wow. Dolores mentions numerous times to Stephen, um, she's never really specific, but just that Ken Kratz is the one on the news making the threats. And he's the one threatening to shut down the Avery salvage yard. He's the one coming after <clears throat> the family. Yes. Yes. And if, uh, if I could just mention, Christy, uh, your excellent work and analysis of the phone calls, you've written a little pricey of each one of the phone calls, and it's been really, really helpful. And also Thank Mill you. Billy with his analysis as well of the photographs. I, I, I urge all our listeners to have a look at Mill Billy's YouTube channel, on the especially the analysis of the photographs and of the phone calls, because they are all jigsaw puzzle pieces that are slowly coming together and the picture that it paints is someone like Ken Kratz who's very narcissistic, very um, aggressive in his approach uh, and uh, we can actually see, Mill Billy, do you have a comment? Nope. Okay. Um, well, guys, if we have a look at slide 148, a big Can I just Jeff, make yeah, one, one more comment before course, we move on? Of course. I, I, of course. As, as suspicious as it was about Jacob's asking whether or not we have a body on the, on the fifth, um, it's, it, to me, it's 10 times as suspicious that Kratz shows up to the Avery Salvage Yard. And yes, he did. Day. Yes, he did. In for, for a missing person case? <laughs> the DA? <laughs> well, well, really? Well, there, were two, there were two DAs. There two of that's right, that's right. Yeah. Two of them, two of them. And, uh, you know, it was the who's who. Michael's brief back. 
Yeah. Yes. Did, did he did he show up for uh, Christine Rudy uh, disappearance? Uh, no. Wrong county, but <laughs> no, no. Yeah, idea. Could, <laughs> unfortunately... could get anybody to show up for her. Correct. Yeah, correct. It was um, a, a very, very bizarre set of circumstances. Like whoever, it was who's who showed up at the Avery Salvage Yard. Uh, Bibi, do you have a quick comment? Two different shit shows, one in one direction and one in the opposite. Christine Rudy, <laughs> nobody shows up. Teresa Hobbox, everybody shows up. Yeah, they did. They did. Uh, Christy, do you have a comment? Not only did he show up at the Avery Salvage Yard, but in his own words, in his own book, does he tell us about how Mark Weger was sitting in his office. Oh, yes. Obviously, if if Mark Weger is sitting across uh, across the desk from Ken Kratt, it's before the end of business. So if she's yes. called, if, if Karen Hallback reported her missing at, let me see if I've got it right now, 237, yeah. how and why? is how and why do we have a special prosecutor already involved? Mark Weger has a, in Ken Kratz's own words, a pretty much, I forget how he describes Mark Weger's face, but there's a yes. look on Mark Weger's face saying, and you're never going to guess where she was today or where yes. she was last seen. Avery yes. Salvage Yard, the yes. Stephen Avery. Like yep. it's a big deal. Yeah. In, in actual fact, Christy, that's, that's the only new thing that I got from his book. <laughs> what, Less than what, three hours after she's reported missing, oh, he's yeah. in a he's in a district attorney's office. Wh Correct. Why? Why? Well, they're just like kids at a candy store. Right? That's exactly what the, it was. They, they've hit, they've hit the jackpot, and that's it's sort exactly of like what happened. Well, yeah, oh, that sounds murdered. like a lie. That that time sounds like a lie too, doesn't it? I mean, they, they, because because Weger didn't go to the house until later than that. Yep. It would have taken time to get back. Yeah. Well, and, to get to... and if you listen to Dispatch, he's really nowhere on there. All you hear is Leslie Mewfer. You hear Mark Wiegert asking in the room a Bobby Brown name. And then he, they have him calling, requesting Jeremy Hawkins. Then he yes. calls and quests John Dietering. Yes. Well, yep. and that further proves that if they had, by the time of end of business, to wind up in Kid Kratz's office talking to him, that further proves that narrative of that 5 o'clock timeline is uh, not accurate because that is the end of business, 5 o'clock. So if, yeah. how, how, in, if Karen didn't call her in until 5 p.m., then he wouldn't have yeah. time to get to his office while he was still in. And another thing that's strange, we got Leslie Lemieux calling dispatch to run her plate info to see if she's having any traffic spots or tickets or anything. Yeah. And in one minute after she run does that, we got Scott Lodorn calling the Calumet dispatch looking for Leslie Lemieux because he found that plate info she needed. Right. But she called right before that with the plate info. So where did she get it from if he was trying to give it to her? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bizarre. Uh, well, you could see by the response. The response was rapid, quick, and targeted from the get-go, right? Uh, it's pretty obvious that all the fingers pointed at one person and one person only. The guy who happened to have a $36 million civil lawsuit, bang, they all descended on him. So, guys... Uh, I'm conscious of the time and the fact that we're still on slide three, but if we have, <laughs> if we have, <laughs> a look at slide, if we have a look at slide 148. Now we know, of course, that uh, Brendan, um, Brendan Dassey, the, the nephew of Stephen, had implicated himself uh, being involved e in the, in the crime. And uh, the, 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 um, the media were pretty cluey. Because don't forget, uh, Ken Kratz gave a conference in which he basically outlined a, a horrific narrative of what both Brendan and Stephen had done allegedly to Teresa Horbach. And if we look at slide 148, a really big 
important question was asked, and I'll read it out. Is there any DNA evidence backing up the kid's story? Right? And Ken Kratz, he was very elusive uh, in providing an answer. And what he did was when he, he did have an answer, he would go out of his way to give a very detailed explanation when he had nothing, nothing, he was very, very elusive. And quite clearly here, he didn't want to divulge any information about DNA evidence, because as we all know, there was none, right? So whatever Brendan Dassey was telling uh, the investigators, Fassbender and Wiget, none of it could be backed up or corroborated by DNA physical evidence evidence so again this is ken kratz playing the fox you know he's basically diverting where he couldn't provide a proper answer mill billy do you have a quick comment well they're doing press conferences after every day of deliberations yes both, both sides yes and numerous times kratz when they ask him questions he clearly states, well, this is my case. I pick and choose who I call and what we talk about. Yes, yes, that's correct. You're talking about the incident regarding Mike Osmondson? <laughs> because when they, uh, some of the press asked him, why didn't you call him up? And he goes, well, I pick and choose who I want. Yeah, and then he got in trial, them asking Weger, well, why is there no evidence based to yes. clean up? They had five days to clean up. Correct, correct. All right. So if we go to slide 149, this to me is a critical turning point in the whole trial. And, and that is on March the 1st, 2006, uh, Brendan Dassey was arrested. That's the infamous interview that he did with both Fassbender and Wiget. There were two of them on that day. And this is when Mark Wiegert told Brendan Dassey, well, he shot her in the head, right? Because remember, they had cranial bone fragments. We don't know who they came from, but allegedly the victim, who could be, in this case, Teresa Horbach, they had two cranial bone fragments that had bullet holes in them, right? Beveling. So Mark Wiegert, got very frustrated with Brendan and directly asked him who shot her in the head. Brendan said that Stephen did, right? So as a consequence of that, one day after, on March the 2nd, that's when they all descend back, they get a search warrant, they all descend back at the trailer and the garage. And uh, Special Agent uh, Kevin Heimert, Heimel, He's the one that went on his hands and knees and he discovered uh, two bullet fragments. One of them uh, was under an air compressor. Now, keep this in mind, right? Those guys have been inside the garage. Uh, how many times, Big Jeff, how many times did they go inside his garage? At least two or three uh, for, for, for other searches. Uh, I, I wanted to point out that you can actually see a picture of the air compressor uh, in the yes. new photos. Uh, when it was searched prior to Brennan's confession uh, during the, uh, in, in the, in the, in the takeover of the Avery salvage yard shortly after the discovery of the RAV. And there's did a you flashlight. See the bullet fragments? I, I wanted you to, see you know, my, my eyes aren't that good. I wanted you to take a look, but there's actually a flashlight on the ground. Uh, or yes. a torch, as you might say, pointing underneath the toolbox that's just to the right of the air compressor, uh, and yes. you can see very clearly under the air compressor. I don't see a bullet there, but my, you know, my, a bullet fragment. Yep. Uh, but somebody no. with better eyesight than me might uh, be able to do that. Yes, I was going to comment on that, uh, and that goes to show how important those photographs are. There is no bullet fragment on the ground yet. When they come back, when the investigators come back on March the second, lo and behold. Um, Special Agent Kevin, he gets on his hands and knees, has a look under the air compressor, bang, they find item FL, a bullet fragment. And lo and behold, a big Jeff, do you have a comment? 
But yeah, I just was curious if anybody was aware who might have signed in uh, on the day before that to the group to the garage and had to write his name kind of off to the side because you know as if oh oh I didn't sign in. Anybody want to make a guess who that was? Well, uh, let's have a look at slide one fifty. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, of course, uh, Detective Dave Remaker was questioned um, during the trial, and he had to admit. You had to admit that on March the 2nd, uh, lo and behold, who was there but Link. Now, you think about this, right? Link should never have been on the Avery Salvage Yard in the first place. Yet, months down the track, Link is back there in the garage. Can anyone tell me why Link is there? Anyone from the panel who would like to make a comment? To plant the bullet? <laughs> it's a big <laughs> it's, it's very um, important for him to a, be there right before any key piece it, of evidence. That's found. how it goes. Maniswalk plants it, Calumet finds it. <laughs> well, lo and behold, we have um, uh, two bullet fragments found, uh, item FL, and I think the other one is called item FK, which we will talk about in a minute. Now, remember, uh, when... Brendan was interrogated. Under no circumstances did he ever mention shooting uh, 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 Teresa Horbach at all. All of a sudden, when uh, Wieger mentions who shot her in the head, it finally comes out that Stephen had shot her 10 or 11 times, uh, including at least twice in the head. And they asked Brendan, well, how come you never disclosed this before? And what did he tell the investigators? Who, who's got an answer? Christy. He couldn't think of it. He couldn't think of it. Um, right, uh, Mill Billy. And also, he, when they first started questioning him about what happened, he claims that it happened outside the garage. Uh, yes. And they're like, no, no, what happened in the garage? What happened in the garage? That's right. And then, and then they start questioning about what, what did you do with the car? What did you do with the car? Uh, he put the gun in it. Yes. No, no, no. Worry about that. What do you do? What do you do with the car? Did he? Did he go under the hood? Did he do anything? They're they're leading him to say things so they can go back and plant more evidence. Because if he would have stuck with her being killed outside, they would have had a huge problem because there's about six seven inches of snow. Yes. Yes. Co correct. And. Guys, let's think about this. The suggestion about shooting in the head came from Wigert. The suggestion about where the shooting event took place came from a Fassbender, the garage. And the suggestion about going underneath the hood came from Fassbender and Wigert. So all the critical points did not come from uh, Brendan willingly. They all came from suggestion from the investigators themselves mill billy do you have a comment yeah it, it's just it's tragic like like for instance you got deering and weird or like i like to say Ligert and fact bender <laughs> yes they tell steven that we know the car came through the deer camp we know the car came through yes. the field to the dead end through the deer camp through the back end but when they talk to brendan dassey he tells them a completely different scenario the car went Past his mom's house, past Dolores' house, past Chuck's house, past the crusher, and that's where they parked it. Correct. E excellent point, Mill Billy. Uh, look, guys, I, I can't emphasize how important that is because remember, on November the 9th, during that interrogation session, they knew nothing about Brendan Dassey in terms of what the involvement, the alleged involvement of Brendan Dassey was. So Fassbender actually disclosed uh, to Stephen Avery during that uh, uh, um, interrogation session, he even said, we know how you got the car to the pit. And he outlined exactly what Mill Billy said. He outlined that where that car had come from, that it came from Cuss Road Deer Camp. So it came from off the salvage yard, 
onto the salvage yard. Well, lo and behold, uh, during a Brendan's interrogation session, Brendan, that they asked him, what did you do with the car? Well, Brendan stated that both him and his uncle drove the car to the pit area, right? They drove the car to the pit area. If you have a look at the crime scene photographs of the RAV4, what you find on the passenger seat, can anyone remember what you find on the passenger seat? There's a CD, a CD case with blood on it, allegedly. Yes, yes. a big jet. A drop of blood? Yes, yes, and also a drink bottle or drink bottles. So somehow um, Brendan was meant to be seating uh, in the passenger seat on top of the CD cover uh, with blood on it, on top of bottles, of which Brendan doesn't mention at all. And it's important because, as Milbilly alluded to, Milbilly, do you have a comment? And why, why don't they mention finding her registration? They mention about going in her glove box and retrieving items from there, but they don't list her registration yes that's yes. supposed to be kept in your car correct correct yeah there's all sorts of things which are really uh, don't add up at all but as Milbilly alluded to they asked him what did you do with the gun oh we put it in the car that can't be right we didn't find the weapon there what did you do with the knife we put it in the car that can't be right we didn't find a knife there and they actually went back to the RAV4, and they looked underneath the seats for the presence of a knife, which they didn't find. Also, they took all the knives from the property, the big knives that potentially could have been used to have stabbed Teresa Horbach. They tested the knives. There was no blood. There was no DNA. So nothing that Brendan was telling the investigators was corroborated. There was nothing to back it up. But to add the ultimate insult, Fassbender must have known that Brendan was telling him a lie because Fassbender told Stephen Avery exactly how the RAV4 came on the property. Fassbender, we get, would have known about Cuss Road and the deer camp. So their suspicions was the vehicle was found there the vehicle was driven back onto the Avery salvage yard. Yet, Brendan was telling them the complete opposite. So Fassbender and Wigget must have known that that could not have been true. Milbilly, do you have a comment? I have one from chat. Yes, Sammy. Um, Rhonda South said, probably nothing, but it's interstellar to me that TH had a napkin around her Pepsi can when the state mm -hmm. of the car overall wasn't very tidy. Any opinions on that from any? Well, the fact that the cherry Pepsi can is also facing the passenger direction, as in if you were drinking out of it, it most likely would, the opening would be facing towards the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. But it's facing towards the passenger seat. And yep. As the fact where the car got on, the dog reports corroborate what they're telling him, too. Because the dogs don't go through the pit. They actually drive the dogs onto the property on the 4th, park by the wrecker. They start at the wrecker. They go from the wrecker, don't find nothing. They're directed towards where the car is. But the reports from what the dog experts say... And what the police say, the police say that they're following them. But if you read the dog reports, the dog reports say that the police were instructing them where to go. Right. But they go and they go around her car. They then take Brutus and put him away. It then starts raining. And then they bring him over by Stevens. Right. So. And, and somebody on Twitter Maybe. covered that. Um prep can thing they said that pam strum seen it in the floorboard but then yet in the pictures then it's suddenly in the drink holder with the napkin wrapped around it they thought maybe somebody from the lab had yeah 
yeah, tested it and then put it in the drink holder and was holding it by a paper towel or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, if you suspect there to be fingerprints, you want to protect them. So you don't grab the can. You don't grab the can with your hand. You try and wrap it with something. Uh, so here's the problem. I, I don't remember who it was on Twitter, but I yeah, seen it yeah, yeah, on yeah. Twitter last week. The problem is you can't trust any of the photographs. You don't know whether <laughs> they're in situ or post processive. And clearly, if you look at the the blood spot on the ignition, that cannot be due to an in situ blood spot. That's been touched with swabs. Because yeah. what you do is with a swab is you swab it up. Yep. And like if he, was, if he was actively bleeding and yep. say his finger did touch that, why aren't there drops below it? Correct. Correct. Uh, it, correct. It doesn't make any sense at all. If you're, you're either actively bleeding or you're not, you can't be selectively actively bleeding. That's why... <laughs> that, that, that's, that's why that's why the inside of the RAV4 is a dead giveaway for a setup. It's as though someone had opened up the passenger door, uh, the driver's side door, leant in with a dropper, and just simply put drops of blood in the RAV4. But a drop of blood was placed on the passenger rear door where the fender is. I wonder why that was done. Mill Billy, do you have a comment? Well, like I said, if we suspect one thing's planted, it all is. And it all starts with the first thing they find, the rap. Yep. yep. I have a question in chat. Um, yes, Sam. Jules has asked for the second time, um, any opinion on Teresa's insole? Where did they get her shoes? It's not noted anywhere. Uh, from her house. Um, yeah. They were a handful of cops, well, two handfuls of cops, were in and out of her house 135 times over a three-month period. I think it was, mostly, actually, it was actually more than that. Probably, but I had, I had record of 133 of them, and then I found two times in the queso where they were there and had copped to be in there, but it wasn't in that list that I had. So that gave me two more right there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and they were right. in and yes. out of her house plenty of times. And, and, and in and, my opinion, they also took a bunch of stuff that they wouldn't have normally been taken from Carmen Botwell. And if you read those, those logs, why are they storing evidence at a public storage unit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably for the same reason that all of these people have no problem getting up on the stand and taking an oath and then lying while they're under oath. Well, yes. they li they lied on the search warrant. Yeah, that that that's right. Yes, uh, and you're right. They did use the insoles of a shoe uh, for the scent, and that's very important because if you have a look at the dog tracks. And, and plenty of people have done some excellent research on that. The dog tracks predominantly are off the Avery Salvage Yard, not on it. And you, you've got scent cadaver dogs. They do these big loops. Uh, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the dogs was actually prevented from crossing yes, the yes. police tape. <laughs> That's loop. Absolutely. And, and, and kind of find out. There's over 30-something pages from the dog reports that Zellner has. We only yes. have, like, three. Right. Yep. Okay. Mm. Okay, so those dogs, those dogs were basically following a scent, uh, and you can see that the trails oh. that the dogs were going on were off the salvage yard, yes, predominantly off the salvage yard. It states that Loof was on an intense track. Yes. And... It try it goes heading in cuss road direction, following the, the berm or on the field or on the fence. Correct. Gets to the barrier tape, tries to go past it, and they tell the handler, keep the dog back. Right. They send Loof away for some odd reason. And yep. then they bring him back. And the handler states that 
going over the same area, her dog indicated that something was not right. Yeah. Now, yeah. my interpretation of what that means could be anything. Like yeah. when she's trying to state that the, the scene had been tampered oh, with or yeah. something. Well, obviously, they go from that spot with the dogs through the deer camp, through the quarry, on the queue. Yeah. What were them yeah. dogs following? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but the other, the other disturbing thing, if I could just say it, guys, was the extensive region that the dogs went around. It wasn't localized. It was a big area, right? And if they're following, what are they following? The rat, where the rav four went, where Teresa's body went. There's something not right here because it was it, a it's big like area. It's like Luf followed the scent of something that was leaving that area, and yes. then they brought in other dogs and they followed the same track, and then yes. they started finding other bones. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So really, it really boils down to what really was found at um, the Deer Camp Cuss Road. And the photographs that I really want to get my hands on are the pile from H1 and H2, where Kaczynski actually mentions body dig site measurements. Yep. And why do, we, why do we have on the back of these dog reports that we have photos from, from the searchers, because they... Yeah. Broke into four teams. The front page says they wrote Jambo Creek. Right. But on the back pages of both them reports, one's in black ink, one's in red ink, they both say they have a list of camera, clothes, cell phone, Samuel yeah. Harry plates, restage cuffs road, watch for traps. Yeah. Or is it, did they meant to say tarps? <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Jules, Jules is asking, was it a cadaver dog or scent dog that hit at Chuck's and and Cuss Road? Uh, you'd have to ask Braun about that because she's done a lot of work. Yes. I'm pretty sure Chuck's dog. was a cadaver dog. There's all kinds of dogs on the property. Scent dogs, cadaver dogs. Yeah. And, and don't forget, guys, because this was a salvage yard, they even mentioned this in a they found lots of vehicle uh, vehicles with blood in them. So obviously, uh, people have been badly injured during uh, road accidents, yes. and, uh, the, and do the dogs were finding uh, the droplets of blood. Yes. If you yes, listen to the first batch of Stephen calls we have, where he's not in jail talking to Jody, the weekend prior, or that weekend, he was trying to drive a van up to Krivitz. And yes. it broke down. They had it towed back to the yard. Chucky states in his interview that he was driving the van through the yard and it blew a rod. Right. That's, you can see in the flyover footage, they have tape around that van. Stephen yes. Avery's blood is in that van because Stephen Avery was driving that car. Yes. Yep. And it broke down. They towed it back. Chuck drove it, tried driving it through the yard and it broke down. And that's where it sits. Yeah. Yes. Oh boy. Well, guys, um, I'm very conscious of the time, and we've gone over two hours. Um, I think we should stop it here because the next set of slides are very, very important and explosive, and we we can spend a couple of days just on on that. It involves my good friend uh, Dr. Leslie Eisenberg and the uh, bones that she examined, and also item FL. I think we should stop it here, guys. Um, we've obviously had some excellent and in-depth discussion about the RAV4 uh, and Obi-Wan's observations about damage and things like that. I think we could almost come to an agreement that there were likely two RAV4s. I'm pretty comfortable with a hybrid RAV4. Parts of Teresa's authentic Toyota RAV4 with parts or components from a, a, a RAV4 from a salvage yard. Milbilly, do you have any comments? 
Yeah, I believe uh, Pam Strum taking photos of that car really screwed them. Yes. Yes, it did, because it set in stone uh, the color. Right? Yeah. There's, not, there's not going back. And the damage. Nobody can explain where that damage came from. But Ryan Hilgis attests that the damage was there. Yes. And correct. they ask every, if it was not important, why do they go back in 2017 and interview all her friends and everybody yes. they ask, was the damage there? Was the damage there? And they all say no. Yeah. And they, well, they, they pressured Ryan, can you please please file this insurance paperwork you're talking? He can't find nothing, can't produce anything. There no. is two there is two types of damages though. Uh yes, the, the pre existing damage that's on the fender well isn't when Ryan said that that vehicle was damaged, he was basically lying saying that the damage that was caused on the bumper was actually uh caused by whoever uh was driving around for which mainly mm -hmm. you know I mean, saying Steven was the one that uh, actually did it, but that damage that's on the fender well could have been the damage that was reported, maybe, that he's basically talking about truthfully, but he's actually lying and stating that the damage that is on the bumper is both the same, one and the same, you know? He yeah. states that she filed an insurance claim. Correct. Correct. Yep. She might have, if that damage on the on the left side... Yeah. Of the fender fender well there, uh, in the fender, if that was pre-existing, that could have possibly been the damage she might have reported, but not to the wrong. bumper. You know what I mean? The bumper was yeah. after the fact. Yep. Hey, I, uh, I thought somebody checked with the insurance, and there was yeah. like Kathleen, or and there was no yeah. Insurance. Kathleen the, Zellner yeah. said Kathleen Zellner went straight to the insurance company, and the only. She had a claim reported for something silly. I can't remember uh, what it was. It was for um, the windshield wiper. Yes. There yeah. was no, there was never any other damage claim to a light. There was never any other claim filed with no. her insurance company while she owned that RAV4. Yep. Yep. But the other important point to mention here, guys, is that whoever caused the damage to the light stopped and picked it up. Well, why why would why would they cut the pieces of fabric that have blood on them, but leave the plastic parts with blood on them still in the car? Why wouldn't they take that out to preserve that as evidence too? Why would they yeah. let it sit there, sit in the car, and yeah. just deteriorate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very good question. They could easily uh -huh. take a, they could have easily taken a Dremel model to cut that plastic piece out. Yeah, correct. Whole saw. Yeah. I'm talking and about the, the other... spot. I'm talking about the spot around the dash. Yes, right. They could they easily just take the panels off the back and pull them off. Yes, they can. Why? Why is the carpet untucked on the right side but tucked in on the left? Yeah, Correct. Yeah. in the cargo area. Yes. Well, yeah. Why, why does it? Why? Why does it look when the when the 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 other photo of the light underneath the seat of the raft? Why does it look like the yep. seats aren't even? connected yeah why do we have photos when it's in the box you can see into the car and it looks like there's black plastic over the back seats and they're up but all the other photos they're folded they're down. down they're down correct that that's why unfortunately guys you cannot trust any of the photographs and you don't know I, what, yeah I, I just want to say this i'm not i'm not i'm never going to stop saying this until somebody can prove why this happened <laughs> I don't care. I don't care why the holes in the door handle or how the hole got there. My question is, why in the hell is it gone in another photo? Yep, I can't answer that because and, it didn't uh, yet exist. That's why. <laughs> well, well, you see, Pam of God, whoever took the photographs showed it's there, November fifth. When we see photos of it yep. in the box yep. a year later, yep. it's gone. Yeah, those so photos were taken before it was planted. Well, that's one way, <laughs> or the other way is that they changed the door handle. The photos are timestamped, buddy. Yes. Yeah. Anybody can swap uh, uh, the date. They can they can mess around with the date to reflect a different time period. 
Yeah. I mean, that, that's a mistake. Yeah, but them, mistake. them photos coincide with them giving the bones back, too. Yes. I yeah. think I think when they have the, when you see them photos of them going through the bones, that's them picking out determining which ones are human so they can give them back to the hall box. Yes. Yeah. Look, the, I, I mean, agree with you. These are def these are definitely big concerns. There are, and there's definitely more questions than answers, unfortunately. But guys, I think we better shut it there. Uh, we'll have uh, next week, of course. We'll, We'll, talk, we'll continue with the podcast, and that's that's when it really starts to get interesting because we've got um, both Eisenberg and Cohane on the stand uh, talking about item FL and the bone, so it really hots up. But, guys, do we have any final quick comments uh, to close our podcast? Uh, Big Jeff. People who don't have anything to hide don't continue to hide things. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, anybody else? A BB. If you want, you can join us over at Discord and talk with us on uh, the phone over there. And uh, other than that, enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Uh, and Mill Billy, do you have a quick comment? I just posted the link to the Discord channel for Power Play. Oh, excellent. So, excellent. so if you want to continue talking about any of this, Feel free to join us. Excellent. Obi-Wan. Just want to thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Obi-Wan. Uh, Sammy, do you have any quick questions? I just want to thank all of the viewers and listeners and people that are contributing in here and asking questions. I really, really love it. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes. Uh, Christy, a, a quick comment. The same. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And join us again next week. Yes. And uh, I'd like to thank all of our listeners uh, for, for participating. And, guys, we exist for you guys, right? We exist. Uh, we appreciate the comments. We appreciate the fact that you listen in to us, provide suggestions. And i also like to thank uh, my STEAM panel. Uh, we're very, very fortunate to have uh, our special guest today, Obi-Wan, and also our regular uh, panelists with their vast and extensive knowledge and guys i like to echo again uh, the excellent work and presentations done by big jeff mill billy with his youtube channel who's uh, gone to a lot of effort looking at uh, photographs and the calls i believe that we're getting very very close to exposing the the, the serious shenanigans done by uh, the state and 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 the and the cover up that continues. Uh, Kathleen Zona is well aware of these happenings that took place at Cuss Road. Um, it'll be very very interesting to see the approach that she takes in uh, if she gets in front of a judge. It'll be very very interesting. Mill Billy, do you have a, a final? Ah, uh, just the more we get, the more we learn. Yes, yes. The more uh, Stephen looks innocent. No question. If you have a look at all the times we've been doing our podcast, our fingers of blame don't point towards Brendan nor Stephen. We're, we're always looking outside. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting listening to the phone calls that Christy has analyzed. They're not, they're, they're not dumb. No. The family no. knows that they're being set up. And they can't do anything about it. Uh, Obi Wan, uh, a quick comment. Yeah, I just want to mention one last thing. Um, yes. People look at these queso files, queso reports. They think that they're they they speak the truth. Nothing in these queso reports can be trusted. They are not as it seems. It's not as what they portray it to be. Because, um, just take for instance Lieutenant Link, uh, yeah. and Avery's place being searched on November fourth. In his report, he states that at ten thirty in the morning that they were searching Avery's property, and that yes. they were interviewing him. And in, in fact, it turned out to be a lie, because 
Stephen was interviewed by NBC 26, and he yes. states that they were there that night, and they searched yeah. his property and interviewed him. Yeah. Well, if that did indeed happen, shortly after that, Manitowoc Sheriff's Department is calling Paul Rabas. Well, who else is going to plant evidence, especially a RAV4, on Avery's property while he's being investigated, while he's being uh, questioned, why he's being searched? There, there's yeah. no way this man could have done it. He was already indisposed. His family yeah. was un- indisposed other than Chuck. Chuck's the we one can take this the to headlights. Discord. Yes. Yes. We, we, yeah, we, yeah. We'll... <laughs> Come and join know, us know, in Discord. We're still wound up. Come and join us yes. in Discord. All right, and guys. Well, I'll, join yeah, our research well, group. Yes, I'd like to thank all of you for your fantastic contributions and effort. And hopefully we'll catch you all at Discord and, of course, for our regular podcasts and also our TTT Thursdays. <laughs> That's coming up soon as well. So we won't have one this Thursday, guys. by the way. Okay. Next yeah, week? Yeah, because of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yes. No worries. Thank you very much, guys. And we'll catch you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.